Hi once again, and welcome to the latest in a series of YouTube messages. I'm Patrick Brazo, and I'm National Chief of the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples, or CAP as we're commonly known. First Nations people in Canada have been living under the auspices of the Indian Act for more than 130 years. This outdated, paternalistic, and colonial piece of legislation is what gives Indian Affairs and First Nations chiefs and band councils the power and control over First Nations peoples. The Indian Act is what has separated, divided, and has given different labels to the Aboriginal peoples of this country. The Indian Act gives the federal government the power to decide who is a status or treaty Indian and who is not. It is this legislation that has created over 600 reserve communities across our country. Prior to the imposition of the Indian Act, we were sustainable and prosperous nations. We had access to natural resources and we had well-developed economies. Since 1876, the imposition of the Indian Act changed all of this and our fate. It's divided and fragmented our communities from what was approximately 60 to 80 true historical First Nations to now just over 600 reserve communities. Today, many of these reserve communities still call themselves First Nations, but in fact, they're just portions of the true historical First Nations. These true historical First Nations include the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, Passamaquoddy, Algonquin, Cree, Mohawk, Ojibwe, Salto, and Haida Nations, to name a few. I believe it's time that we eliminate the Indian Act. Instead, I'm calling for the development of legislation that would recognize our true historical First Nations, as was recommended by Canada's Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples over a decade ago. I'm a member of the Kitigan Zibi Reserve, but more importantly, I'm a proud citizen of the Algonquin Nation. In Quebec and Ontario, there are nine recognized Algonquin Reserves that were created because of the Indian Act. Isn't it time we look towards amalgamating these communities and reconstitute the Algonquin Nation? It would be a return to the way it was prior to the imposition of the Indian Act. We'd have our own constitution and laws, accountable leadership, well-defined areas of jurisdiction, conflict of interest rules, application of human rights laws, and control over our own destiny. And we would decide who has the rightful entitlement to citizenship within our nations. What could be better than that? Isn't it time that every First Nation citizen in Canada be given the right to choose what future they want for themselves and their children? This is what the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples believes in, a process which would entitle every First Nation citizen to cast a free vote in a referendum on the issue of eliminating the Indian Act. This would give you and I, the grassroots people of this great country, the option of determining our future in a democratic process rooted in openness, fairness, accountability, and transparency. Many people mistakenly view the Indian Act as a means of protecting Aboriginal rights. Well, this is both a myth and unfortunately a fear-mongering tactic used by some. The truth is the Indian Act is impeding the great progress we can achieve as First Nations peoples. Let's not forget what the Indian Act sought to do. It was meant to, and I quote, assimilate and get rid of the Indian problem. Assimilate and get rid of the Indian problem. Is this the legacy we want to leave our children and grandchildren? I surely don't. So I invite you to join me and the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples in our efforts to put an end to the Indian Act. We want to create a more positive, progressive, and prosperous environment together with your help. It's that simple, and it's about time we took control of our own destinies. So till next time, I'm Patrick Brazo, and remember, fulfilling your dreams is all about being willing to work for them. Miigwech.